Namaskar. Welcome back to the third session of Business Laws. In continuation of previous session, we were exploring about business forms and legislation in Unit 3. Let us explore about the advantages and disadvantages of LLP. Previously, we uh, have a compared view of uh, LLP with partnership firm, a simple type of firm with companies. So let's explore some advantages for which LLP may be preferred. One advantage, definitely everyone looks for the easy form. So it is easy to easy in the formation, less legal and procedural requirements. And uh, low, low cost is also associated with the formation minimum being 800 and maximum being 5,600 subject to revision from time to time. And uh, in fact, it is a separate legal entity contrary to the simple firm. And uh, uh, as you, you can see that LLP and its partners are distinct from each other. Whereas in case of firm, they are these uh, representative in the same case. Perpetual existence, the LLP shall continue to exist until it's wound up in accordance with the provisions of the relevant law. And it contains limited liability and liability is limited to the extent of his contribution. Personal assets of the partners are exposed in case of, only in case of fraud. Well, flexibility in the management. LLP Act does not regulate the LLP to large extent. Rather, it gives freedom to partners to decide the way they want to run and manage the LLP in the form of LLP agreement. No requirement of minimum capital contribution. No restrictions as to maximum number of partners. A partner cannot bind the other partner for his acts, easy to dissolve or wind up. No requirement to maintain statutory records except that of book of accounts. Well, still uh, there are some disadvantages for LLP. Well, the documents filed through the Ministry of Corporate Affairs portal are public do document and any person can assess them by paying a nominal fee. Well, uh, with this, there is another uh, approach that they, that is visible and you can yourself explore on the web as well. You just search about any company uh, that is visible on domain. So there are certain players in the market. They are sharing their details about those companies. Uh, some informations are freely visible or accessible to you. Some are paid. Well, information like uh, when this company was formed, what is the total turnover, how many partners, who is the managing director, and, and many, many more documents that are freely available, you can access them. So uh, well, uh, it is, it, you can treat it as, a, as a, a limitation, as well as a, it's a matter of transparency. Everyone can access and uh, can get access to the exact uh, picture of the uh, LP or uh, that uh, organization. Well, LLP cannot, um, whereas in case of a firm, this, this is not the case. Well, LLP cannot raise funds from public. Well, it can either borrow, borrow debt from financial institution or via loan from partner, 
Well, any act of the partner without the knowledge of other partner may bind the LLP. Well, no separation of management from the owner. Well, um, as far as the we have explored about the comparison, importance, advantages, disadvantages, let's explore how uh, LLP is incorporated, how it is formed. So minimum number of two partners are required, individual or body corporate. We, we have explored that at least two individuals should be there. In, in case of, uh, uh, there was a very good example in which there were three body corporates. So uh, they were not uh, entitled to form LLP. So in order to form LLP, they should have additionally two members to become a LLP. Well, uh, uh, minimum two designated partners were individuals. So at least one of them should be resident in India. And uh, digital signature certificate, LLP name, LLP agreement, registered office, LLP incorporation process. Uh, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, while its notification dated 18 September 2018, made major amendments in the rules for incorporation of LLP. Wide uh, Limited Liability Partnership, Second Amendment, Rules 2018, which came into force in uh, from 2nd October 2018. Well, here uh, I have tried to share or uh, present some schematic, diagrammatic presentation of uh, steps in, uh, involving step number one to step seven uh, in, in the total cycle of the LLP formation. Well, uh, um, uh, some of the highlights, uh, it's... Uh, standard pro program that you can follow accordingly. Well, the form that is uh, that is called a fill lip is similar to the SPICE for company incorporation. So you can uh, relate that for company formation, the form or formats are SPICE, whereas for LLP, it is FIWLIP. Well, the, state, uh, the first step involves the, uh, there is a procedure for uh, procurement of digital signature certificate. So it's a, a normal process. Uh, you can explore the DSC, digital certificate for uh, signature certificate. And uh, then second step is apply for name approval. Well, uh, uh, you, you need to explore a specific name for your LLP and uh, that should be unique and uh, uh, it should not uh, mention the name of country name or you know, uh, some name should be avoided in it. So, and once it is approved by the uh, respective agency, only then you can move forward. So, uh, name search, name should be unique and uh, it's better, uh, it should be appealing with reference to the type of work you are exploring. And uh, it is this step, usually it is preferred if you, you explore your trademark as well, your logo as well. So, you, you decide your name, you decide your trademark and you decide your uh, uh, logo as well. Uh, whereas, uh, as far as the name approval is concerned, name was approved from the for the purpose of LLP. Whereas for long run, uh, if you want to run, uh, stay in the industry for a longer time, you should have a logo as well as trademark, depending upon the type of business you, you're venturing into. So uh, accordingly, those should also be registered for a long run in the game. Then, uh, Step third is once step one, two is over, step third is involved preparation of documents for incorporation of LLP. And those documents involve uh, various conditions, uh, what will be the future, what, what kind of business they are exploring, like, like that kind of uh, document. Then uh, uh, next step is that is the formal process that is filling up of information in the form of filling form. Once these steps one to step four is over, then certificate and incorporation is uh, uh, process and then step six under six step uh, uh, apply for pen and ten well the pen stands in the name of uh, for that llp and the, this pen will be subsequently used for the purpose of uh, income tax or taxation purposes similarly ten is for the tax identification number nowadays uh, 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 at this stage uh, i think G gst registration is also required subsequent to this uh, that is also mandatory uh, depending upon type of business you are venturing into because uh, GST is required for a, uh, almost all the sort of uh, taxes regard, regard requirement nowadays. Well, preparation of LLP agreement and the final step is the preparation of the LLP agreement under the step seven. Once all the steps are over, so you are ready to do your business and uh, all the steps 
all these steps are in detail, elaboratively discussed. Uh, one step that uh, I missed during the preparation of documents, in case of uh, the property is not owned by the partner or so, so there must be a requirement of NOC from the owner. Suppose uh, it's a rented property. So an NOC is required from the owner that uh, this place may be used for the purpose of uh, business activity. Or else, if it is uh, in the name of any of the partner, so he should give, uh, he or she, she should give the NOC in this regard. Address proof and other things, those are the uh, routine formalities. Um, uh, in addition to this, there are regular agencies, there are regular private players are also in there. You can just explore in the search. They will facilitate the documentation process. So if you wish, you can uh, go for it. And, and uh, they cost reasonably, uh, reasonably according to the player because uh, there is a very good competition in this. Well, after this, we have taken a very long time in unit number three, although it was very interesting as well. So let's move to the fourth unit of uh, block second. Uh, it is regarding Companies Act 2013. Um, in this unit, we will be covering how the company is formed then principal documents uh, for a company, memorandum which involves memorandum of association, article of association, prospectus, what is share and loan capital, share capital, debentures, deposits, company management, um, you know, type of meetings and how the companies wind up. Well, uh, uh, the unlimited liability of the partners of a traditional partnership under the Partnership Act 1930 became a hurdle to meet the capital requirement. Well, from formation to its winding up, a company is governed by Companies Act. Apart from the Companies Act, other acts like the Company Secretaries Act, the Competition Act, Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act, Indian Partnership Act, Sikh Industries Act, etc., are also there to have a control over the changing corporate world. Well, uh, in uh, the previously, the Companies Act 1956, which preceded the Companies Act 2030, well, uh, uh, there was some modification, amendments over the period of time. Well, with the incorporation of so much amendments, modification, it was not easy to handle the affairs. So considering this scenario, uh, a new act was placed in place, replacing the previous act of 1956, which is called as Companies Act 2013. Well, in this act, there are 29 chapters, which containing 470 sections and seven schedules. Well, this act ap applies to companies incorporated under this act or under previous company law. Well, insurance companies, banking companies, companies engaged in the generation or supply of electricity. Well, any other company governed by special act for the time being in force and such body corporates which are incorporated by the any act for time being in force and as a central government may by notification specify in this behalf. Well, as far as the formation of a company is concerned, well, a company means a company incorporated under this act or under any previous company law. Well, section two, subsection 20 of the Companies Act, this definition does not clearly bring, bring out any uh, bring out the meaning of the uh, company. So accordingly, a corporation in is an artificial being, invisible, intangible, existing only in contemplation of law. Well, as far as Hani, a company is an incorporated association, which is an artificial person created by law, having a separate entity with a perpetual succession and a common seal. Well, the main features of company involves, it has got limited liability, perpetual inception, it is a separate legal entity, incorporated association, it's an artificial person, common seal, and transferability of seal, uh, shares. So uh, these are the main common features or main features for a company with which we can identify and relate the company. Well, as far as the company is concerned, it may be of uh, three types, at least of three types, on the basis of liability, on the basis of members, on the basis of control. Well, on the basis of liability, 
well, company limited by shares. It's one of the company in which the liability of the members is limited by its memorandum of association to the amount, if any, unpaid on the shares held by them. And it is explained under section two, subsection 22. Well, company limited by guarantee is one where the liability of its member is limited to by the memorandum just amount as the members may respectively undertake by the memorandum to continue to the assets of the company in the event of being wound up, section 221. Well, these types of companies may or may not have a share capital. Such a company may be useful only where no working funds are needed or where these funds can be held from other sources like endowment, fees, charges, donation, etc. Well, the third is unlimited company is a company where the liability of the members of its member is unlimited, section 2, subsection 92. And the liability of a member ceases when he ceases to be a member. Well, the liability of each member extends to the whole amount of the company's debt and liabilities, but he will be entitled to claim contribution from other members till the time a company is a growing concern, the liability will be limited to the extent of shares. The creditors can institute proceedings from winding for winding up of the company for their claims. Well, the official liquidator may call the members for their contribution towards the liabilities and debts of the company which can be unlimited. Well, on the basis of members, well, one person company that is called OPC. Well, a new class of companies can be incorporated by a single person recommended in 2005. Well, Dr. J.J. Irani committee under section 262 of the Companies Act, which has one of the, which only one person is a member. Well, OPC unlike the sole proprietor is a separate legal entity with a limited liability of a member. Well, uh, we have explored about the uh, sole proprietorship. Uh, there, the liability rests on the uh, on the proprietor. Whereas, in case of OPC, uh, the liabilities are li limited liability for the member. Well, private company, uh, that is, it is defined as section 2, subsection 68, having a minimum paid up share capital as prescribed and which by its article restricts the right to transfer its share except in case of one person company limits the number of its member to 200 well prohibits any invitation to the public to subscribe for any securities of the company well then there is a, a small company it is defined as section 2 subsection 85 of the act well a paid of share capital of which does not exceed 5 lakhs or such higher amount as may be prescribed which shall not be more than 10 crores rupees. Well, turnover of which as per profit and loss account of the uh, premium daily preceding financial does not exceed 2 crores or such higher amount as may be prescribed which shall not be more than 100 crore rupees. Well, the features of the small companies are it's a private company. Well, paid up capital not more than 50 lakhs or turnover not more than 2 crores should not be a section 8 company or holding a subsidiary company subsidiary of a company well the uh, the fourth type on this is a member is public company it is a final section 2 subsection 71 well is not a private company and has a minimum paid up share capital as may be prescribed well the status of private company which is a subsidiary to public company uh, it's a it's a uh, complex relationship in view of section 2, uh, subsection 71, the Companies Act, a private company, which is a subsidiary of a public company, shall be deemed to be a public company for the purpose of this act, even where such subsidiary company continues to be a private company in its articles. So according to section 3, subsection 1a, a company may be formed for any lawful purposes by seven or more members, where the company to be formed is to be a public company. Well other types of company. So it's a huge uh, uh, diversity is there. One is government company. It is defined in the section two subsection 45. Well, uh, in which uh, uh, not than 51% of the paid up share capital is held by the central or state government or state governments or partly by center and partly by one or more states and a company which is a subsidiary company of such government companies. Well, foreign companies, it is defined as section 2, subsection 42, company or body corporate 
incorporated outside India, which has a place of business in India, whether by itself or through an agent, physically or through electronic mode, and conducts any business activity in India in any other manner. Well, Section 8 company, it's an interesting uh, company. Well, it promotes the charitable objects of commerce, art, science, sports, education, research, social value, religion, charity, protection of environment, etc. Well, such company extend, intends to apply its profit, if any, in promoting its objective and prohibiting the payment of any dividend to its member. Example, FICCI, SOHM, uh, National Sports Club of India, CI, etc. These companies are licensed by central government and the registrar on application uh, register such person or association person as a company under this section 8. On registration, the company enjoys same privileges and obligation as a limited company. On revocation of the license in the public interest, the central government has the power to amalgamate it with another company registered under this section having similar objects. Well, a dormant company. Uh, under section 455, where a company is formed and registered in this act for a future project or to hold an asset or intellectual property and has no significant accounting transaction, such a company or an inactive company may make an application to the registrar in such a manner as may be prescribed for obtaining a status of dormant company. So uh, this dormant status may be helpful in some uh, taxation related aspects. Well, inactive company, not carrying on any business or operation or has not made any significant accounting transaction during the last two financial years or has not filed financial statement and annual returns during the last two financial years. Well, Nithi companies, these are the mutual, uh, these are for the purpose of mutual benefit of society. Well, a company which the central government may by notification in the official gadget declare to be a Nidhi or mutual benefit society, as a case may be, to lend and borrow money to the members for the purpose of their mutual benefits and to cultivate savings habit among the members. These are classified as non-banking financial company, NBFC. Well, the last one under, under the category of other companies is public financial institution, that is PFI under section two, subsection 72, well, LIC which was uh, incorporated under LIC uh, Act 1956, uh, IDFCI, then a uh, specified company referred to it in the UTI, then uh, institutions notified the central government under Section 4A, Subsection 2 of the Companies Act 1956, so repealed under uh, Section 450, 465 of this Act, well, other institution as may be notified by the central government in consultation with RBI, an institution shall be so notified as PFI if it has been established or constituted by or under central or state act other than this act or the previous company's law or at least 51% of the paid up share capital is held or controlled by central government, state government or partly by central or partly by one or more state governments. Well, uh, the formation of a company definitely a lengthy process. It involves uh, a good number of legal formalities and procedures and the major stages involved. Uh, the first stage, maybe uh, you can say promotion, second is registration and the third one is the commencement. So although uh, the number of the steps appear to be very small, very, very few, that's uh, appearing three, but now within uh, these three uh, steps, there are good number of sub steps, there are a good number of set, set of formalities that are required. And again, I, I am reiterating that uh, uh, there are a good number of uh, private players in the market. Uh, you can explore if you wish to set up a company. So they will help you in facilitation of uh, documentation and uh, necessary legal formalities that are altogether required for formation of a uh, company and that to a reasonable, on a reasonable price. Uh, reasonable cost is, fees is there. So promotion is a very first step where a promoter, promoter is one or promoters, those who intend to start a, book, start a company. The promoter may be an individual, a firm, an association, a person or a body corporate. So they had an idea of a business, uh, they want to start. So th th that's the concept of a promotion. 
then registration of incorporation. So those persons who, uh, or those uh, initial promoters, those who intend to start a business, uh, will register themselves. And this is a, this is the process for uh, under section seven, subsection one. It gives the idea of registration of company and subsequently commencement of uh, business under section 10A. Well, the principal documents of a company involved, there are basically three fundamental documents of a company. One is MOA, Memorandum of Association. Second is Article of Association. And the third one is Prospectus. That is Prospectus is under section two, subsection 17. Well, as far as the Memorandum of Association is concerned, it is a charter of a company which lays down the objects of the company and also all the specific functions, operations, limitations. And under section two, subsection 56, the memorandum of a company shall be in respective forms specified in uh, schedule one or uh, in the form of tables A, B, C, D, E. Well, uh, uh, these tables are, uh, these uh, tables are of a specific purpose type of uh, memorandum one need to form. So accordingly, this to be selected. Then uh, articles of association is a document that constitutes all the rules and regulations for the conduct of internal management of the company. And the schedule one uh, of the act gives four formats in the form of table F, G, H, I, and J. Whereas prospectus is concerned, uh, it gives the detail about, uh, uh, detailing about the company. Well, as far as the type of prospect is concerned, so uh, there are certain term, at least, at least one is red herring prospectus uh, that we uh, very often heard about during the advertisements. So there are basically four types of prospectus. One is red herring prospectus, second is shelf prospectus and information memorandum. Third one is abridged prospectus and the fourth one is deemed prospectus or for, or for sale. Uh, as far as the uh, in, in, inherent documentation is concerned, well, red herring prospectus means a prospectus which does not include complete particulars of a quantum of price of uh, securities included then. In simple terms, a red herring prospectus contains most of the information pertaining to the company's operation and prospects, but does not include key de details of the issues such as its price and its number of shares offered, etc. Uh, that may not be uh, relevant for many of the persons. So it's basically advertisement of the company. Well, shelf prospectus and information memorandum, uh, which the securities or class of securities included therein are issued for subscription in one or more issues over a certain period without the issue of further prospectus. And similarly, average prospectors and deemed prospectors, which is offer for sale. Well, uh, there are certain matters that are mandatorily to be specified as stated in the prospectus. Uh, it's a, any document through which a company communicates and invites the public to invest into it and to subscribe or purchase its securities. Well, a prospectus contains information about the financial position of a company, its directors, signatories, to the memorandum, the objects of the public offer, additional charges created, changes in the finance, etc. Well, it is mandatory for a company to provide correct information prospectus, or it would be liable for misrepresentation fraud. And section 26, subsection 1 lays down the matters required to disclose and included in a prospectus and requires the filing of prospectus with the registrar before it is issued. Well, Name and address of the registered office of the company, company secretary, chief financial officer, auditors, legal advisors, bankers, trustees, if any, underwriters, and such other persons as may be prescribed. Dates of opening and closing of issue and declaration about the issue of allotment letters and refunds within the prescribed time. One well, statement by the board of directors about the separate bank account where all monies received out of the issue are to be transferred and disclose of details of all the monies, including utilized and unutilized monies, out of the previous issue in the prescribed manner, need to be disclosed. Details about underwriting of the issue, consent of the directors, auditor, bankers to the issue, experts' opinion, if any, and of such other persons as may be prescribed. The authority for the issue and the details of the resolution passed, therefore, while well, procedure and time schedule for allotment and issue securities capital structure of the company in the prescribed manner, main objects of the public offer, term 
of the present issue and such other particulars as may be prescribed. Well, main objects and present business of the company and its location, schedule of implement, uh, implementation of the project. Well, particulars relating to a management perception of risk factor specific to the project, gestation period of the project, extent of progress made in the project, deadlines for completion of the project, any litigation or legal action pending or taken by the government department or statutory body during the last five years immediately preceding the year of issue of prospectus against the promoter of the company. Well, minimum subscription amount payable by way of premium, issue of shares otherwise then or cash, details of directors including their appointments and remuneration and such particulars of the nature and extent of their interest in the company as may be prescribed. Well, disclosures in such manner as may be prescribed about sources of promoter's contribution. Well, uh, in case of misstatements in prospectus, there are certain consequences, which mean with, uh, it can either be due to commission or omission of both. Well, anything in the prospect that deceives and misleads the, an investor and induces him to buy share or debentures calls for remedies both against the company and its promoters, directors, and every person involved. Well, misstatement in prospectors is a serious offense and attracts civil liability against company and criminal liability or civil liability or both or even person who authorizes the issue of such person, prospectus. Well, uh, a company uh, definitely it is for uh, getting funds from uh, multiple sources, including public. So uh, uh, one of the uh, option for getting funds is through share. Another one is from debenture, loan, and other so. So as far as the share is concerned, uh, share capital, uh, share capital raised by a company by issues of share, it is a corpus of funds to be used for the object of the company to generate profits. Well, memorandum of association provides for share capital clause. Well, company is limited by guarantee or unlimited companies need not have share capital. And the various terms that are associated in the share capital are nominal or authorized or registered capital, issued capital, subscribed capital, called up capital, paid up capital, uncalled capital, reserved share capital. So you can explore them in detail. Uh, it is very much explored over there. And various sections are there. Like for issued capital, <coughs> it denotes the nominal value of the, that part of authorized share capital, which is issued or offered to a general public from time to time for subscription and includes the share allotted for consideration other than cash. This form of capital has been defined in section two, subsection 50. Well, subscribe accordingly, uh, all the variety of cap uh, capitals are explored. As far as the types of shares are concerned, the uh, capital of the company is divided into invisible units of a fixed amount. Well, each of such unit is called a share. Share means a share in the share capital of a company and includes st uh, stock except where a distinction between stock and share is expressed or implied, Eviden evidenced by share certificate uh, that is under section two, section 84. It is the measure of interest in the company's assets to which a person holding a share is entitled. The rights and obligations attaching to a share are those prescribed by the memorandum of the articles of the company. Well, a shareholder not only has contractual rights against the company, but also certain other rights which accrue to him according to the provisions of the Companies Act. Stock may be validly issued only when shares are fully paid up under section 43. It is uh, detailed in, in elaborate way. A share capital of a company limited by shares are of two kinds. One, uh, maybe equity share capital. And second one is preference share capital. Well, there is a difference between them. So as far as the equity share capital is concerned, it has got a voting right with the differential rights as to be as to dividend voting or otherwise in accordance with prescribed rules. But all share capital, which is not preference share capital means equity share capital. Well, preference share capital is that part of the issued share capital of the company limited by shares, which carries or would carry a preferential right with respect to payment of dividend or repayment of capital. 
in case of winding up. Well, how shares are issued? So issues of share at par, issues of share at premium, well, issues of share at discount, issues of sh uh, issues of sweat equity share. Well, uh, as well as sweat equity shares means equity shares issued by the company to employees or directors at a discount or for consideration other than cash. Sweat equity shares may be issued for providing know-how or making available intellectual property rights, say pay times or value additions. Well, rights issue, it is under section 62, one, uh, subsection A. Well, the existing members of the company have a right to be offered shares when the company wants to increase its subscribed capital. Sub shares are known as right share. Well, or when a company, we are private limited company or a public limited company, listed or unlisted company, offers its share to existing shareholders in proportion to their existing share holding in the company for the purpose of raising fresh capital in, for the company. Well, in other words, preemptive right that an existing shareholder has in a company in preference to outsider. Well, it is a, a known dilutive pro rata way of raise capital. It is not mandated to buy the rights offered. A shareholder can either ignore their rights uh, and let it lapse, transfer or sell the rights to other interested investors. Well, with these rights, the shareholder of the company can purchase new shares at a discounted rate to the market price. Well, uh, there are certain legal requir uh, requirements. The offer shall be made by notice specifying the number of shares offered, uh, pro rata rates, and other, other details need to be there. Uh, then comes the bonus issue. Bonus share refers to a further issue of shares made by a company having share capital to its existing shareholders without any additional cost. In proportion to their existing holding, bonus shares are fully paid up shares issued to its member out of its free reserves, the securities, premium account, or the capital redemption reserve account, no issue of bonus share shall be made by capitalizing reserves created by revaluation of assets. Well, again, there are certain legal requirements. Well, uh, as far as the, uh, there's a concept of transfer and transmission of shares. Well, uh, there's a, uh, the transfer of share or title of shares is voluntarily by one party to another for adequate consideration under contract. Well, transfer deed is executed in transfer of share and the stamp duty is payable on the market value of shares. Well, liabilities of transfer cases, uh, transfer ceases on completion of transfer. Whereas the transmission is concerned, transmission of title of share by operation of law, that is death, insolvency or leniency. Well, it is initiated by legal here or receiver on death of a shareholder, his shares are transmitted to his legal representative. When a shareholder becomes insolvent, his shares are transmitted to his official receiver. And on shareholder becoming lunatic, his shares are transmitted to his administrator appointed by the court. Provisions relating to, to transfer and transmissions are stated in the relevant sections as well. Well, there is a concept of buyback also. Well, uh, uh, the company can buy back its own shares. It's a free reserve. Uh, the securities premium account, well, the proceeds of any share or other specified securities. However, buyback of any kind of share or security shall not be made out of the proceeds of any earlier issue of the same kind of shares or same kind of other specified securities. Well, there are certain conditions for buyback. The buyback must be authorized by the article, approved by the board of directors uh, at a board meeting and or by a specific resolution, passed by shareholders in general meeting, depending on the quantum of buyback. Approval of board of directors up to 10% total paid up equity share and free reserves. Approval of shareholder uh, up to 25% of the aggregate of the paid up uh, capital and free reserves of the company. Share to be bought back must be fully paid up. The buyback of shares of private and unlimited public company may be from the existing shareholders or a proportionate basis on a proportionate basis or purchasing the securities issued to employees of the company pursuant to a scheme of stock option of sweat equity. 
Well, before the buyback of the share, the company shall file with the registrar of companies a letter of offer. Well, offer for buyback shall remain open for a minimum period of 15 days, but not more than 30 days from the date of dispatch of letter of offer. Buyback shall be completed within a period of one year from the date of passing of a specific resolution or board resolution, as the case may be. The ratio of aggregate of secured and unsecured debts owed by a company after buyback shall not be more than twice the paid up capital and its free reserves. Well, there is another condition of surrender and forfeiture of, uh, forfeiture of uh, shares. Surrender share apply, implies giving the share back to the company, either by way of settlement or of a dispute or for any other reason. Well, the act contains no provision for surrender of shares. The surrender of share is a valid only when article of position provides for the same. And when forfeiture uh, of such share is justified or when shares are surrendered in exchange of new shares of the same nominal value. As far as forfeiture is, uh, uh, share is concerned, if a shareholder fails the call on share, the company has following options to sue him for the amount due, forfeit the shares, that is take away the shares forcefully. A company may, if expressed authorized, is by its article, forfeit shares for non-payment of calls and the same will not require a confirmation of a terminal uh, where power is given in articles it must be exercised strictly in accordance with the regulations regarding notice, procedure, and manner of state wearing. Otherwise, forfeiture will be white. Well, there is another mode of uh, uh, raising capital, that is debenture. Uh, it is defined in section 2, subsection 30. It involves debenture stock, bonds, or any other instrument of a company evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge on the basis of company or not when debenture are issued. The applicant are given certificates under its common seal, if any, or under a signature of two directors or a director and the company secretary. If he has been appointed representing the money they have lent to the company. Then the main characteristic of a debenture is a debenture is in the form of certificate. Debenture certificate must be delivered within six months from the date of allotment of debenture unless the company is prohibited by any provision of the law or any order of the court, tribunal, or any other authority. The company pays periodic interest on the amount raised by the issuing debentures till they are fully redeemed. Generally, debentures carry a charge, fixed or floating, on the company's assets. However, debentures may be issued without charge as well. Like shares, debenture 2 is a movable property which is transferable as the provisions contain the articles. Debenture may be redeemed at the end of full term or in installments, say yearly or bi yearly, or any other period like two installments. Debentures holder have no right to vote in any of the meeting. Well, the third type of uh, method of raising funds is deposits. Well, apart from shares and debenture, public deposits are yet another important source of raising funds by a company. Well, according to Section 2, Subsection 31 of the Act, uh, read with Rule 2.1c of the uh, of the company's acceptance of deposit Rule 2014, deposits include any receipt of money by way of deposit or loan, or in any form, other form by the company. There are various receipts by the company that neither are nor or nor include in deposits following are some of them. Receipts from the central government or state government or a local authority or any amount received from any other source. Well, received from foreign governments, received uh, as a loan from a banking company or uh, financial institutions, etc. Well, uh, now let's move to the company management. Well, since company is an artificial person, it appears to be managed by natural persons. So definitely they, they are involved director, managing director, secretaries, etc., board of directors. So the board constitutes mission and its powers. The board of director BOD is selected according to the procedures prescribed in the act and the article of association. All public companies are required to have a board of director that includes members from inside and outside of organization, depending upon the size of organization. Well, section 2, subsection 10 of the Companies Act defines the board of directors or board <coughs> as a collective body of the directors of the company. Does the term board of directors mean a body duly constituted to direct, control, and supervise the affairs of the company? 
they are trustees of the company they are responsible to the acts in the best interest of the company and oversee that the management serves the protects and protects the long term interest of all the stakeholders of the company they do not they do this by meeting regularly to create policies etc <coughs> the composition of board well every company shall consist individual only thus uh, nobody corporate association form shall be appointed as a director in the company under section 149 of the act states every company board must have minimum three directors in case of public company two directors in case of private company and one in case of opc well a company can appoint maximum 15 directors but this but this can be increased after passing a special resolution in its journal section 8 companies can have more than 15 directors even without passing a special resolution well every company to have at least one resident director who must be uh, stayed in the company for respective duration one woman director at least one third of the total number of directors as independent directors well regulation 17 of the sebi uh, uh, further elaborates on the composition of the directors well uh, the power of the uh, board includes to make calls on shares on money to borrow money to invest the funds of the company to grant loans or to give guarantee uh, to provide security in respect of loans and other functions as well there are certain restrictions on the power of board uh, they cannot sell or lease or dispose of the whole or substantially the whole of the undertaking of the company to invest the amount of compensation received as a result of any merger or amalgamation otherwise then in the trust securities to borrow money that exceeds aggregate of its paid up cap share capital free reserves and security premium to remit or give time for the repayment of any day debt due from a director well then directors uh, have certain uh, qualification that he should not be of unsound mind under charged insolvent pending application to be adjudicated as insolvent convicted for a moral turpitude foreign exchange regulation bear imprisonment for uh, not less than 6 month and 5 years are yet to be elapsed from the date of expiry of the sentence if a person is convicted of any offense and sentenced in in respect thereof to imprisonment of 7 years or more he shall not be eligible to be appointed as director in any company well a court or tribunal has passed an order of disqualifying him for appointment as a director and the order is in force shares by him are in arrears for more than 6 months except the directorship exceeding the maximum number of directorships well if the court refrains from committing fraud such a man who director of public company not filed financial statements on annual returns for any continuous period of 3 financial years fail to repay the deposits or pay interest there on or to redeem any debentures or on the due date of pay interest due there on or pay any dividends declared and such failure to pay or redeem continues for a one year or more and 5 years have been elapsed well uh, as far as the directors and their appointments concerned appointment of first director under section 152 sub section 1 appointment uh, of uh, first director section under 152 section 2 appointment of uh, uh, as far as the first director is concerned it is uh, under the article of company may provide for appointment of first director if no provision is made in the article subscriber to the memorandum who are individual shall be deemed to the first director of the company until the directors are duly appointed and in case of one person company an individual being member shall be deemed to be the first director until the director or directors are duly appointed by the member of the, in accordance with the provisions of the sections well uh, subsequent directors are appointed by the uh, 1422 then woman director um, uh, you know certain class of company is required to have at least one woman director every listed company should have one woman director and every public company will be with paid up for capital of 100 crore or more with its turnover 300 crore or more must have at least one woman di- uh, director every system has required ac- according the appoint the same then independent director they are uh, uh, usually outsider alternate directors additional directors then uh, a small shareholder director appointment of director by t- tribunal in the event of certain incident or uh, then vacation of office of director uh and due to any reason including disqualification including retirement and resignation 
uh, the resignation of director is also specified in a specific manner. Retirement is a uh, retirement is in FIPO manner. Then removal of director by shareholder by the national company law tribunal. Uh, then, as far as the meetings are concerned, in order to facilitate the functioning of any company, there are there is a provision to have a specific type of meetings. One is shareholder meeting, annual general meeting, extraordinary meeting, class meeting, board meeting, creator meetings. So uh, uh, the, the, there is a requirement to have a specific type of meeting for a specific purpose. Well, winding up of companies, as far as the winding of company is concerned, uh, it is uh, in previous section, uh, I missed uh, something. So uh, there is a specific requirement, what kind of meeting required uh, to be completed in, in the entire duration. So in one financial year, there is a number. So uh, how many number of annual general meeting can be there? How many number of shareholder meeting can be there? How many number of extraordinary general meeting can be there? How many type of number of class meeting is uh, need, need to be there? There are board meeting is to be done. So and then, then there is a gap between consecutive meetings that is also mandated. Then uh, who will chair the meeting? What is the quorum for the meeting? So everything need to uh, is all well specified. So it is to be followed accordingly. Then what kind of decisions are need to be uh, rectified by the in the meeting? So it is well defined in, uh, accordingly. As far as the uh, under section two ninety four a of the act, the term winding up means winding up and uh, under this act or liquidation under the solvency and Solvency Bankruptcy Act uh, 2016 as applicable. The procedure for winding up of companies are provided in Chapter 20 of the Act and the Insolvency Bankruptcy Code of India 2016. There are two modes of winding up. One by tribunal, that is under Section 272, and uh, that another one is voluntary wind up, Chapter 5 of Insolvency Bankruptcy Code of India 2016 deals with the voluntary liquidation of corporate person, voluntary liquidation proceedings can be initiated by a corporate person if it has not committed any default. Well, after this, uh, let's move to block three, which involves two units, uh, general principal contracts and international contract sales. Well, uh, general principle of contracts, uh, they must be specific. They are basically based on means also for the mercantile law of England. Uh, the law of mercantile, lex mercantia, mercantoria, act of parliament, or statutes, law of England, and, uh, and principles of equity. Well, as far as lex uh, mercantoria is a set of customs and usage which are recognized and enforced between merchants, merchants, and part of common law of England. The second one is the sanction of the state and uh, most superior of the power of source, and uh, its override and the rule of the common law of equity. The phrase common law is used to denote the law that can be based on judicial pronouncement delivered from generations. Well, King Henry II in 12th century established the common law courts or king's courts, which were also known as chancery or equity courts. Well, formation of contracts is based on agreement, offer and acceptance, agreements between two parties uh, or one offer accepts, when then there are certain essentiality for valid accept acceptance it is not by force, it is on mutual terms, then lapse or revocation of rejection of op offer, well, completion of contract and jurisdiction. Generally, the contract completes when the acceptance of the offer is posted uh, or put in on uh, to transmission. It was made at the place where the acceptance is received by the offerer. It was easy to determine the completion of contract when the parties negotiate in person but it will be difficult to determine the case of negotiation by post, telegram, telephone, or mail. The contract in case of instantaneous contract completes only when the communication of the acceptance is received by the offer. In other words, the contract is said to be made at a place where the acceptance is received, but not at the place where it is transmitted. Well, uh, the, there are certain essentialities of valid contracts include consideration, uh, consideration discharge of contract, then uh, what in, under what capacity it can be done, uh, that is also mentioned. And mutuality of mind is also considered, uh, in the, uh, free consent is required, no coercion, undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation, mistake. Well, as far as the legality of consideration and object is concerned, apart from the above essential or 
for the formation of a valid contract, the legality of consideration and object is must. The unlawful agreements may be classified as illegal, immoral, well opposed to public policy. The performance of contract, both the parties of the, uh, to the contract either perform or offer to perform their respective promises until such performance is dispensed with or excused under any provision of this act or any law enforced, even the death of one of the party makes his legal representative liable unless the intention of the party to contract differs. Well, time of, and place of performance, performance uh, of reciprocal promises and doctrine of uh, uh, frustration or agreement to do in, uh, an impossible act. The agreement between two parties to do an impossible act itself is void. Supervening impossibility, supervening illegality, doctrine of frustration, limitation, appropriation of payments, contracts which need not to be performed. Well, action for money had uh, and it received. Well, money paid to plenty for use of defendant, quantum measure, uh, obligation of finder of last goods, necessaries supplied to a person incapable of contracting, and consequences of breach of contract. They are common law of remedy and equitable remedy. Well, let's move to the next year, right? It is international contracts for sale. Well, with the liberalization, privation, and globalization, LPG, wiped out the boundaries of countries and made the world as a global village. The transactions of sale at international level are considered to be backbone of international trade through international contracts. The contracts are regarded as international contracts when the parties to the contract are coming from two different countries. Well, as far as the historical background is concerned, uh, the 20th century focuses on uniform framework to tackle the situation of the diversified legal system. Before the Second World War, uh, in the uh, in the early, uh, earlier of the century, uh, there was an intention to bring the uh, legal ideas of the international tra transactions on a common platform. But with the onset of First and Second World War, the this process was again uh, backtracked. Uh, as far as uh, uh, before the Second World War was concerned, Ernest Rabel suggested a possibility of uniform sales law to the Institute of uh, Harmonization of Private Law. Well, in 1930, Unidroit initiated the project to prepare law unifying the substantive rules governing international sales contracts under the auspices of League of Nations. In 64, two conventions, uh, namely Uniform Law on International Sales, that is ULIS, and uh, uh, Uniform Law of Information of Contracts, ULF, unifying the law of international sale goods were adopted and came into force in 1972. These are still not widely recognized outside Western Europe as instruments of international harmonization. Well, the final draft of uh, Convention of International Sales of Goods, that is CISG, approved by General Assembly of UN in 1980, came into operation first in 1988. CISG is now supported by a number of conventions like UN Convention of Limitation Period uh, in International Sale of Goods in 83, Geneva Convention on Agency of International Sale of Goods in 2005, Convention on the Use of Electronic Communication and International Contracts in 1983, Uniform Rule on Contract Clause for an agreed sum due upon failure of performance. Well, 90, so far, 94 countries ratified and exceeded the convention as on 2020. Applicable law and rules. So convention is uh, in some international sale contract. The law applicable to contract will be provided for in a treaty. Well, United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, that is UNCTRAL, has created three treaties that provide the applicable rules governing certain contracts, uh, CISG and uh, the Convention on Limitation Period in the International Sale of Goods. Then uh, United Nations Convention on the Use of Electronic Communication, as I, we explored earlier. Then parties may also, in addition to this, parties may also choose national laws to apply to their international commercial contracts. The party with greater beginning, uh, greater bargaining power may insist on its national laws or parties may insist choose the law or third state, usually one considered to have a well-developed law with regard to commercial transaction. English law is frequently used in international transactions, in particular with reference to reinsurance, charter parties and sea trade among other areas. Well, parties may select 
interesting Swiss laws because of perception that Switzerland political neutrality makes this as a neutral law. However, recent uh, uh, reports suggest that uh, there is a frequent preference to choice for German and French law also. Well, uh, there is a concept soft entry. Uh, well, there are certain modern model contracts and clauses. There are international sale contract, international distributes contract, international agency contracts uh, likewise. Assessment of, of sale uh, or goods by transfer of property with certain dignity and flexibility. CIS influences on individual national systems. Well, there are regional efforts like uh, ASEAN and other to uh, address the similar issue. There is a concept of cooperation as well associated uh, that is mutually uh, bringing about. And there is a consistent effort to bring the uniformity in the forms, format system. And uh, uh, interestingly, the COVID has affected the international trades also. And it has presented certain situation which was not anticipated previously to address uh, because uh, there's suppose considering there is a international trade uh, agreement between two parties to deliver something payment is done and the party failed to deliver uh, even uh, with the lapse of period uh, and there's a penalty clause or so and uh, company failed to do because of certain unavoidable circumstances so considering all these aspects, there is a continuous evolution in these uh, rules and consideration as well. So with this, we concluded up to unit number six. And the coming session, we will be exploring block four, uh, unit number seven. With this, Namaskar.